Wow, what an intro, right? If I don't say so myself. <laughs> what is popping, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Jeff Poppin. Welcome to the first ever episode of Poppingsburg County. <laughs> Not just the first episode of the series, but the first ever episode on this channel. Let me tell you, I've been lulling over this channel for the last year. It feels so good to get the ball rolling with this series. Big shout out to Groundbreaking Beats, whose music you could hear at the start of this video that I used with their express permission. And a quick disclaimer, I'd like to say first that I did not make the map. The map's called Sterling Bay and the theme's called San Minato. You can find them both on the Steam Workshop and there'll be links to both in the description. So, what is Poppingsburg County? Well, my plan is with this series is to make one medium-sized city on the big Warren thing jutting out onto the river, and then to have two smallish towns on either side of that, and then surrounding the towns and like in between the towns and the city to have villages, and there'll also be one or two villages way out on the outskirts of the map. I say medium-sized city because I don't really plan on building high density much, no skyscrapers or anything. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to try and reach that population, it just means that I'm trying to scale back on the height of the city. And I think the reason that there'll be no high density is because this town is probably more important in its heyday than it is now. And I think to emphasise that, I will place the museum somewhere central, but anything industrial or commercial that I place will be like mega downsized, and that's for one big reason. Because of all the scenes and the vistas and the big mountains and stuff, I can imagine this being like a big British National Park, so it would be very hard for industry to expand into that. And the idea is that this national park would envelop most of the map, so you actually have some of the villages contained within inside the national park. Before I get into it more, just a forewarning, um, the format of the first two vids is kind of weird. It's a two-parter, which means that there isn't going to be any cinematics at the end of this part, but if you want, you can skip this episode straight to part two, and at the start of that video, there'll be a link that takes you straight to the cinematics, if that's all you're interested in. So back to the video, the theme for the city is going to be kind of generically British slash North European. Um, so there's going to be a lot of old clashing with new Victorian buildings right next to like mo very modern buildings. Um, the road structure, I the road structure I'm aiming for is going to be quite spiderwebby with roads heading straight through them. I realise that the road structure that I'm building right now, that was the roundabout and such, doesn't look very spiderwebby, but that's um, that's because I imagine all these main roads, and especially the super highway that you can see in the background, um, were built long after to accommodate all the traffic that was going through the city. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be any grid structures whatsoever. Um, I imagine that on either side of this island, well, this Warren thing jutting out onto the river, there could be a case that the land on either side of that was reclaimed, which when land is reclaimed, you know, a big building project happens all at once. And when building ha projects happen all at once, it's not, it looks very inorganic, looks very grid-like. So there it is, that's the Grand Central Station for this island. Um, you can see it's, it's obviously from the default pack and it obviously looks very modern. So in the whole theme of old clashing with new, this is very much on the new side of that spectrum. And my plan is to only try and emphasise that with the decorations you see later in the video. As for the reasoning as to why they would have such a modern kind of tr train station, and I, I would imagine the reason would be that this massive highway that was built overhead um, had to go through the area that the old station was residing on. And maybe that train station had a bunch of problems and it was due an upgrade anyway, so they tore it all down and built a new one. So, as far as naming is concerned, um, it's all pretty open season. Like, I, I'll be setting up a wiki soon, but basically the the river doesn't really have a... Would I call it the River Poppin? Would it be the city of Poppinburg on, on the River Poppin? Or is Poppinsburg the entire area, like it sort of suggests as in, in the name Poppinsburg County? But I'm very set on the idea that Poppinsburg is the city, and po and Poppinsburg County is just the area around that city, which will inevitably engulf some of the towns and villages. Anyway, I'll be setting up a wiki soon that will be open to anyone to edit, but big names, like the river names and maybe town names, will be decided on based on Twitter polls, 
but if you've got any suggestions for the for the river name, um, put it in the comments below. Any input at all would be very gratefully appreciated. Aha! Yeah, this road's kind of weird. The reason why I've done this road like this is because I can foresee a situation in the future where there's be like, um, where there would be a lot of trams lining up, um, and I don't want that to be connected directly to the roundabout. So there should be a sort of backlog for the trams to exist in. And whilst it looks very strange right now, I agree, um, it, I think the end result is very nice. It looks very modern. I wonder what you guys think about the format of the videos that I've decided to do, because basically the reason why I've split it into two parts is because I want to stick to a sort of 10 minute length video. But I only decided that after filming the content. So if you'd like longer videos with gaps in me talking where um, there'll be a sort of time that sections, please um, comment that below. Or indeed, if you have any idea for how the structure of my video could be changed, then just drop that in the comments below. I debated with myself for a while on how I should start this series. Um, or whether I should start it off just building the CBD or, or what, but or just building a road layout. But I opted to start it with a decorated central station because it just makes sense to me that everything else should branch out from a sort of big central station. There will obviously be other central areas and one that comes to mind is there's going to be a harbour area, sort of bay area, with a very well decorated mariner. But talking about grand central areas and stuff makes, me, makes, makes it sound like the whole project is going to be like this lavish gentrified area but really there's going to be some areas which are a bit, be a bit less gentrified, a bit more run down, a bit unkempt. You know, all cities have them and I think it would add to the realism of it if I were to make one of these areas quite a bit more run down. You know, maybe that could become a bit more of a heavy theme, like you have these gentrified areas like with the parks and stuff, like the park I'm building right now, um, you have you have areas with lots of parks, with lots of gentrification, and then you have um, areas very nearby that are quite run down, but like separated with walls and trees and stuff. Maybe one or two gated communities on the outskirts of the city. That being said, some of the some of the themes for some of the areas won't be nearly so heavy. I think it'd be quite fun if at least one of the areas had very post World War Two architecture, like copy and paste rabbit hutch houses. Um, I'll, I'll be posting images on the screen of what I mean, um, but there are lots of lots of examples of that in the UK. Basically, I don't know the real reason why there are so many of these areas. It's I think it's a mixture between political policy of having to build so many homes and the economy of post World War Two Britain. But basically, there are many examples of these boring copy and paste neighbourhoods in lots of cities and towns in the UK. Uh, these mulch pit things that I'm placing now come from King Leno's pack. I think they look really nice and I think mixed with the, you know, the small and big ones, it's a sort of like a bubbly kind of modern park sort of feel. I really like it. I really think it fits with the, with the theme. I wrestled for a while as to what tree, what type of trees I should place in these pots because basically what tree looks very modern what tree would make this area stand out more and i settled on these like these really tall jungly kind of trees you do see them around in the uk so they definitely are around in this kind of climate it does make sense but i think they do look very modern it does very much help this area like they're obviously not natives and i won't be placing them anywhere in the national park but they definitely fit in right next to the station they help the place pop and that's the wrap. We're coming close to the end of this video. I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of this video. Please drop a like, comment and subscribe to Jeff Poppin. I will be uploading the second part of this episode very, very soon. And that one will include cinematics. And those cinematics will include the station. It's just I didn't want to jump right back into City Skylines and film some, cin some cinematics of the finished station because I do a lot of edits to the station next episode. Thanks very much again for watching. I've been Jeff Poppin, au revoir, and see you in the next one.